long, long time ago, the America's Cup was a one-band show. America held it for so many years. Then an Aussie fella, Alan Bond, came along and the cup was gone. Filled to the brim with Dennis Connell's tears. And challengers from across the earth met in the stormy seas of Perth. But one yacht had him on the run. And his name is KZ7. And New Zealand first got involved in the mid 80s, really, with um, Sir Michael Fay. It was a whole new thing, really. We all knew about the America's Cup from watching Australia 2 on TV, and that was a, an obvious progression of something that we all wanted to do. So we all leapt on board as soon as there was an opportunity to. KZ7 ended up having a fantastic run and nearly pulled off the impossible and sparked people's imagination back here and, and started the 35 year plus involvement in the America's Cup. Great place in the yacht race they couldn't give up Where the Kiwi boys too fast and too tough Oh, we've got the America's Cup Oh, we've got the America's Cup Twelve years ago, the call went out to stay Stand Up Australia Now in 1995, it's Stand Up New Zealand Black Magic is about to sail to an unprecedented 5-0 win 95 was a, was a huge win, really That boat went there and just absolutely clonked everyone, you know, it won just about every race. The America's Cup is now New Zealand's Cup, and for only the second time in 144 years, the most illustrious and the loser of prizes in sailing, international sports' oldest prize, leaves the United States, this time to a different down under, New Zealand! So that was a big step forward, it was a big step forward for this country. It was a new start led by Blakey and Russell Coates. Uh, put a lot of emphasis on boat design, uh, a lot of emphasis of more sailor input. It was a much more integrated approach. And that really has started the culture of what we still are today, I think, where we're not scared to look outside the box and we put a lot of emphasis on technology and a lot of emphasis on having a very integrated team to get to the best product. Coming into 2000, Team New Zealand at that point really picked up on what they knew as a winning combination or a winning formula in 95 and expanded on that. They've got the stranglehold on this match, PJ, already. Absolutely magnificent. Dean Barker, it doesn't get any better than this. Got stronger again in design, got stronger again with the sailing team. Everything was just a lot more finessed and it was a slick act. It was just hard to beat. 149 years of competition for yachting Holy Grail. Team New Zealand complete the first successful defence of the America's Cup outside America. The America's Cup is still New Zealand's Cup. Oh, this never gets it done any better than this, Pete. You know, after 2000, there was obviously a big loss of key people from Team New Zealand at that time who went off to, you know, form the Alinghi team. And for the Black Boat campaign, a stunning announcement from Team New Zealand. They went everywhere, they went to Oracle, they went everywhere. So it was basically, uh, what was left was a very young team. Lost a bit of their leadership and focus, really. Race one, America's Cup 2003. It's Team New Zealand in the windward position. A lingy down to Lewin in ahead. A lot of, um, yeah, people had to step up into new roles and we're still pretty adventurous with our, our design philosophy, but we just didn't have the reliability. A lot of gear issues and breakages. There's an awful lot of water here as they're starting to bail furiously. Well, it looks like the outboard end of the, the main boom, that new innovation that was seen there, has broken mechanical failure early on in race number one. Bad way. Team New Zealand broken their mark. Just collapsed, snapped in half. Oh my goodness. Just disaster for Team New Zealand. Got taken by surprise a little bit, I think. Probably thought, well, we've done this twice before, we know what we're doing, but um, weren't ready for uh, the effort that was put in by a lot of the challenging teams in that particular cup in 2003. That was a very strong cup. Sailing's biggest prize has a new home. Switzerland. 
I think you really did need a strong, experienced team. We always used to say you've got to have a mix of grey hair and, and young people at the same time, but you've got to have some grey hair in there somewhere. Probably pushed the innovation thing too far at that point. There's this fine line between being reliable and fast. And all of a sudden we had a boat out there that was filling up with water, masts falling down. You know, it was a step too far. After 2003, when um, Grant came on and we came on with him, uh, it was pretty slim around here. Like, I remember some of those first meetings, there's probably only five or six of us in the office. That's all there was. So it was really starting from scratch. When it comes to yachting, he's an old hand. Today, he's one with a new mission. I'm not shackled by any of the, you know, the past as such. Uh, the object in the end is to win the cup. Grant Dalton's new position will test his experience as an ocean racing sailor. That as far as we are concerned, there is unfinished business on the table. With Grant Dalton as leader of Team New Zealand, we believe we have made the first very large step in addressing that unfinished business. Four years after the rebuilding began, this was the moment Team New Zealand had been striving for. I want to say mainly to all of you, to all our supporters here and in New Zealand, you're absolutely brilliant. We love you. Thank you. The America's Cup. It was a great campaign, and I, I think, again, it was the start of the rebuild of the team. I don't know really if we're ever in a point that we would have beaten the Lingi, that we always knew they just had that click on us that we couldn't find in the end. Jay Lingi had the starboard tack here. The Team New Zealand, both boats, boats dialed down here. This could have resulted in a penalty for one of the boats here. The Lingi's on starboard. Well, expect a flag, there's a flag. And they've forced Team New Zealand away. We heard Brad Butterworth say, aim for a stern. Slam dunk here by Lingi. And the Lingi is right on top of them. The lead changes again. The question here is, can they lay the mark on Paul Tech? Oh, yellow, yellow flag. Team New Zealand. Penalty, Team New Zealand. Team New Zealand has got a penalty against it. We would obviously learnt a lot. We had a lot more processes in place. We were quite reliable. We were fast. But at the end of the day, we just didn't have that final bit of speed to actually be quicker. At best, we were even. Team New Zealand did not have the penalty. They would win it. All down to completing the penalty, PJ. We can see Team New Zealand's got much better here. They're doing two to one over Olingi. Here goes Team New Zealand. They're going through the penalty now. They're going through their penalty. What a way to finish. Race number seven. Team New Zealand are going for it. Can they get their bow down? Can they undertake the penalty? Here goes Team New Zealand. They're coming down. Alingi out to the left. Team New Zealand, can they accelerate? Yes! Yes, can they do it? They're getting up. We need a high shot to be able to see it. Team New Zealand coming down. Alingi, Alingi's going to get there. just didn't quite have enough jets today to get around them. We got a good fast boat, Rolf did a great job with the designers. We had a little edge on the other boat and that was enough. Closer and a lot better than 2003 but, but not close enough. But the start of something with a very strong team for sure and a team that has been built on from Valencia is a lot of that nucleus is still here today. The AC-72, the, the design concept was for it to be a non-foiling boat and, and it was, yeah, huge, huge scale, big wings, incredibly quick, incredibly powerful. Every time there's a new class, there's a big opportunity for challenges because everyone's starting from the same level. No one had a, no one had a, a leg up on this. Our feeling is there's one thing that will define this America's Cup and that'll be this ability to foil and a foil efficiency with as low a drag as possible. In the last couple, the closing speeds of those boats might have been a total of 18 knots. Now they're going to close at probably more like 45 knots. So if you get it wrong, there's going to be a lot of carbon splinters around the place. It was ingrained within the Team New Zealand culture is we just got to think outside the box throw the ball out there and, and then just try run after it and catch it. And we, you know, we really did that with that 72. 
we'll never outmuscle some of those big teams. And and our our, our thinking has always been, you know, we've got to be smart. We've got to try and outthink them, and we've, we've got to come up with, you know, innovative ideas that we've got trust in that we can actually move forward with. We obviously, um, in our secret squirrel operations, figured out that we could make these boats fly, foil, and yeah, we we're able to, within the rules, clearly come up with some foils that could actually lift the boat out. It was particularly exciting knowing that we knew the other teams that was not on their radar where no one really thought that was possible and they still didn't even believe we were doing it, um, thinking we were photoshopping. So that for me was, you know, probably you know, the most exciting part of that campaign was the, the design evolution we were on. We probably just let the cat out of the bag literally, you know, too, way too early. I think the, the pioneering and the sort of the pushing, if you like, in an engineering sense and a sailing sense that, that the team did, I think was, was pretty incredible. We, we, we went from a team that didn't really know a whole lot about sort of, you know, 72 foot wing sail catamarans to a team that very nearly uh, took the America's Cup away. The team has always been open to sort of crazy ideas, if you like, and, and pioneering out of the norm and I think at the end of the day that sort of Kiwi ingenuity if you like um, you know is, is a really really strong aspect culturally within the team. Um, everyone runs out of time so really at the end of the day it's, the, it's, it's how you think and how you work together as a group that ultimately gives you the best chance of success. All of the fans here in San Francisco and at America's Cup Park and around the world and certainly down at that tiny nation of New Zealand will be cheering huge right now. The first race of the America's Cup goes to Emirates Team New Zealand. If you look back now, we were probably too conservative in the approach that we took. And that boat was tapped out pretty early. We were putting 30 seconds of beat on them and then it would be 25 and then it would be 20 and then it was, it was getting chipped away quite quickly. Uh, these guys have done everything right in this race except they just don't have the pace. And obviously we were trying everything we could to squeeze more out of that boat but we, but we couldn't. You talk about the speed of the Kiwis, they certainly had it when they won the Louis Vuitton Cup just about three weeks ago and they had it at the start of the 34th America's Cup. Where has that speed gone? I don't think it's gone anywhere. I think the other guys just put the afterburners on, put the jets on. Vertical learning curves have been talked about all the time. They get better every day. Oracle has just happened to get better faster. Every single race, they've been out of the water foiling more and more upwind. They're using it to their advantage. The question is, Imagine if these guys lost from here. What an upset that would be. San Francisco was, you know, was absolutely brutal at, at the end. It was sort of, it was all good and, until it wasn't. Uh, New Zealand almost capsized. Oh, oh my gosh. Got attacked, got attacked, got attacked. Keep going, Hoka. Hold back, come in back. Come in back, come in back. Come in back. Come in back. Oh, New Zealand my had the right away there. Goodness. Their wing didn't pop, so their wing has popped the wrong way. It has not actually gone over to the new side until right there. Their wing did not actually tack. It stays on port tack through this whole maneuver. It just acts like a wall instead of a wing, and the windage of that wall almost put the boat over. How you pick yourself up after that is is, is pretty tough, and, and you need you need a little bit of time to, to, to regroup, to think about it. Well, what was dubbed as a race for redemption for Dean Barker and Emirates Team New Zealand looked like it was on course as they led a week ago. Eight wins to one. They were sitting on match point. One more victory, and the cup was being shipped off to Auckland, New Zealand. And here we are a week later, all even at eight, and it is Oracle Team USA that is just moments away from keeping the cup. And I never thought I would say this, but... Oracle's going to win the America's Cup. This is incredible. <laughs> the Stars and Stripes say it all. The comeback of 2013 is complete. America's Cup will stay in America. The loss in San Fran clearly made us stronger. It's a pretty tough way to get stronger as a team. So one of the lessons we had to just keep bringing on new equipment, keep getting faster, 
we can't be conservative during that last period. We just got to keep looking for the next step. We had no guarantee that we we're going to survive more than a few months at one point there and, and we went through a period where yeah we lost a, a lot of really key guys. Kia ora, good evening. Dean Barker axed. After a week of rough sailing, Team New Zealand finally fronted to confirm the move. So already we were on the back foot. But that, in a lot of ways, sort of inspired the, the win. It was too much unfinished business to just let go. And I think that underlying drive from the core group um, was quite infectious. And as the team grew um, and we had new talent come in across the board, um, I think that, that, that feeling of what we needed to do was, was a pretty strong underlying current. We definitely had more appetite for risk in the Bermuda Cup. We thought, right, you know, we're, we're behind. We're not gonna go there and tread the same path as they are and outmuscle them. It's impossible, we'll just get beat. So we, we simply had to outthink uh, the other teams and, and in the end I think we did a, a great job of that with some of the key componentry uh, of, of the AC50s, our wing control system, the cycling for example. Well, that, that idea came up two and a half years before the cup. Even internally there was a lot of you know, friction about whether it was worth carrying on with but we stuck with it, kept it under wraps and to this day I'm amazed that no one ever knew about it for up to you know, six months before the cup or whatever it was. Incredible really. Well, Emirates Team New Zealand, they're certainly known for innovation. The Kiwis have been doing this for a long time, the America's Cup. They have cyclers and not grinders. Pedal power is amongst us. Now, one of the philosophies going forward for uh, Bermuda again was to understand as much as we could about the boat's potential. And to do that, we developed a, an autopilot that could computer could fly the boat as accurate as, as possible. We always trusted that the humans would get up to that level and we could integrate an autopilot but it, which created a target for the guys to follow. Well everybody's focused on the power they're creating for the hydraulic system but I think there's two other aspects that are uh, far less talked about. One is the hands-free of Blair Took. He's controlling the, foi uh, the foils and the, and the positioning of the foils because his hands are free because he's cycling, he's not grinding. So you can spread out the responsibilities. The other one is windage. These guys very clearly have better windage. Everybody's tucked down into their cockpits. Look at that, there's, there's no way they don't have a better windage package than the other teams do. We just said, look, just don't hold back. Just build us the fastest equipment and we'll learn how to sail it. The America's Cup is a totally different type of pressure, different from the semis and finals. It goes to another level. We all remember San Fran. America's Cup will stay in America. Now we're a lot stronger team. We've been through a lot and we're really ready for the challenge. Hey, I'm expecting hey. obviously very, very aggressive, very tight racing. I'm sure it's going to be, you know, one hell of a battle out there on the water. Now that's what we're here for and uh, that's what we're excited to get into. There, there was new talent that came into the team, you know, two years prior to Bermuda. But again, that played into our hands a little bit. The style of boat that the AC50 was, it, it kind of suited the younger generation. This was just falling in their lap because they're used to sailing high performance boats. They were used to sailing without a tactician and making their own decisions in their own mind. So that fitted perfectly. It's gonna be one hell of a fight. The timing was perfect for us to introduce some amazing new talent with Pete and Blair being able to step up to a whole nother level and then your Andy's and Josh's and Simon's and Joe's all coming on board. Carlos, there's a whole new wave of new people, uh, which was really timely for us. A lot of the guys that had been through and lived San Francisco, you know, those, those scars simply never heal. So I think having the balance of new talent and youth and enthusiasm coming through right across all the different departments of the team was very, very important, but I think having the, you know, the knowledge and you know, the baggage, if you like, of that loss of San Francisco, I think that blend, if you like, um, you know, created a pretty, you know, almost a super team mentality, if you like, and no stone was left unturned. By the time we got to Bermuda, I think we were in a position we thought we are in a good space, but we'd never raced. We used to race Curly in the chase bike. That was the only time we ever raced another team. So we were definitely, lacking race practice, our, our learning curve was like that. 
So hello and welcome to beautiful Bermuda and the crystal clear waters of the Great Sound, the stunning setting for the 35th America's Cup. The waiting is over, the match itself is here, the defender Jimmy Spithills USA against the challenger Peter Burlings New Zealand. Well, it's four years since an America's Cup race. It's really hard to imagine how much effort has gone in for this exact moment in time. Like that whole period in Bermuda to me was amazing. That three months, you know, it just had that feel about it from the day we landed there that this was going to be good. You know, you just had that, no one ever said it or no one ever wanted to say it, but you could feel that it was there. New Zealanders have made a storming start to the America's Cup match, exploding out of the blocks. And I think that's something that we've, we've got to after all these challenges and after all these you know, all these cups that we've gone through, that it sort of all seemed to come together for that three months in Bermuda. This is, this is a bit of a caning going on here right now in this America's Cup, and quite frankly, something I don't think anybody really anticipated. We, we anticipated these guys to be good. I don't think anybody anticipated them, their Kiwis to be this good. Jimmy Spitler has lost his magic wand, and in the meantime, the Kiwis, innovative in their design, intense in their focus, resilient throughout the time here in Bermuda. The New Zealanders peddling into the history books. The America's Cup wrestled from the USA by Burling's Men in Black. The trophy belongs to New Zealand. All that heartache and pain of San Francisco replaced by jubilation here in Bermuda. Hey, guy, and just... We had a saying, uh, and Glenn will remember this meeting well, um, that we want to throw the ball out as, this time as far as we can and see if we can get to it. Uh, and, and let n no restriction on design, let's just see what we can do here. And we, we, that was really a catch cry within the organisation and, um, and, and we have achieved some quite amazing things which have been quite revolutionary in the sport. Well, we've got to be careful we don't go the other way and go, well, now we're a defender, we have to be more conservative. It's a very, very different feel of being the defender, and it's a very, very different mindset. It's quite challenging. You do, you come up with a rule and a concept, and you come at that rule with a vision. Um, but you've got to make sure you're getting all these other ideas from when someone picks up the rule for the first time and they can come up with some completely different ideas, which could be better. That's what the America's Cup's about. One of the biggest things I think for this team now is going to be having to keep the intensity, if you like, um, all the way through to the last race of the America's Cup. And that's something we did extremely well in Bermuda. And there's going to be a lot of distractions um, this time around that we're going to have to work very carefully that we make sure that we don't let those distractions infiltrate the core value and the core mana of the team. And um, that's going to be a big job to, to manage that. And I think that's something that we're going to have to be very careful of. But, you know, we're actually going to try and win the cup. We're not trying to defend it. We're actually going out to try and win the cup. And all we're going to do is worry about, you know, the 6th of March and the 10 days after that and then, then take it from there.